Right. Well, did you know that those who can't teach, teach gym? <laughs> and take that one step further, those who can't teach gym become personal trainers. Nice. Welcome to my world. My name is Greg <coughs> Justice, and I am a personal trainer. And I have been a personal trainer for 30 years, 28 of them owning my own business. Uh, I own the gym that we do, we're just upstairs, AYC Health and Fitness. We're Kansas City's original personal fitness training center. I opened right after, the, literally the week after completing my master's degree in exercise science in May of 1986. This is our 28th anniversary month. I have personally trained over 48,000 one-on-one sessions. We're in talks right now with the Guinness Book of World Records because there's not another trainer that's even close to that number of individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. There was a time when I had 78 regularly scheduled one-hour appointments, personal training, on my book. They were regular, uh, can say, or, or, or regular sessions <coughs> weekly. Um, and kind of put that number in perspective. If you were to wake up tomorrow morning and begin personal training and do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you would reach that number sometime around the uh, month of January in the year 2020. Uh, so I have been there, done that, and lived in the trenches of personal training. Uh, so all of, you know, all of you are about to enter into the world that I have been there and done that, and I want to share some of my experiences with you through those 48,000 sessions. Um, I've actually authored 13 books, seven of which actually, number seven, will be published in about how many weeks? Two, Two weeks. I'll bet three or four. <laughs> um, and actually, it's the last one over here, I can only fit five of them on the slide. But uh, the last one here, the psychology of athletic success, mind over head chatter. Um, but today, we're here to talk about treadside manner, right? It's about the business of personal training, what will really keep you in business for a long time. Now, you've all heard the term bedside manner, right? A doctor's bedside manner. Well, the, the doctor-patient relationship is actually central to the practice of healthcare. And they actually start teaching doctors bedside manner the very first day they start medical school. That doctor-patient relationship <coughs> is so critical to their long-term success. And I want you to understand the importance of what I call <coughs> treadside manner, of that client-trainer relationship and how important that is for your all's success. Now, uh, to give you an example of that, my average client has been with me for 24 years, my average client. I closed my books in 1994. I'll occasionally take on a new one for a period of time, but that was when I officially closed my books, tw about 20 uh, years ago this summer. Um, for growth in this business, you're going to find that if you don't have good treadside manner, if you can't interact with your clients and relate to them and their struggles, you won't be in business very long. I want you to understand the importance of that relationship that you develop with your clients. The average client-trainer relationship, I've read a few different studies, but on average you'll hear it somewhere between six months and 12 months. Right? So what does that mean to a personal trainer? That means you suddenly have to be a marketer, right? You have to constantly get new clients. And on average you'll find that it costs about six times as much to get a new client as it does to maintain that relationship with your current client. You start to understand the importance of maintaining those relationships for the long haul. Now, how many of you are familiar with Donald Trump's show, The Apprentice? Okay, what's the line he likes to use? All right. That was my very first experience with Treadside Manor. Um, it was uh, almost 30 years ago now. I uh, was managing a local workout center, and I walked into my office one day, and there was a gentleman behind my desk. My first inclination was, this probably isn't good. Right? The club had been for sale. I didn't know it. And this is a gentleman who purchased the club from the owners. Well, we spent about 30 minutes discussing my future, 
And as far as he was concerned, I wasn't part of the future of that club. 